Hey everybody, what's going on? Uh, today, I, I kind of want to go over uh, some important stuff. I, I think it's important because it's something I've been seeing in the gacha community for a very, very, very long time. Um, and not even just Ever Crisis, but other games. Um, so I want to kind of go over something with uh, regards to that. And then also, um, based on some information I was able to acquire today, um, it looks like there is already plans for a six-month anniversary, which is not an anniversary, because anniversary is means annual, so... <laughs> The fact there's a six month anniversary doesn't really make sense, but you know what? It's whatever. Um, so some info that that came out today uh, that I, I've been able to acquire, um, and I'll show it to you guys here on screen in a little bit. But um, the first thing I want to go over um, is is in regards to basically people's idea of of a gotcha game being doomed because the money that that it was making on on the first month, second month, whatever, right? At at X point in time. It is now not making that X amount of money now, right? And and there's this huge misconception that that in a, that a gotcha game is doomed if it doesn't make the exact same amount of money it did like at its highest point for like the rest of its life. And I I don't know why people have this this idea of that, um, but it it unfortunately shows the lack of understanding of how um, of of how how profit margins and things like that work and. And, and so I just kind of want to educate you guys a little bit on, on on the way this stuff actually works in the real life. I, I work in a, I work in sales, um, and I deal with stuff this stuff on a daily basis, right? I deal with I see I work with numbers, I deal with marketing, I deal with you know cost basis, bottom line. All I, this is stuff I deal with in my in my job. Um, and so and so I, I think there's a lot of people who don't who don't quite understand how this works. And so just just so you guys know, um, as, as a good example. Uh, I'll even use Street Fighter Duel because that was a game I was playing before this one and I, I put a lot of time into that game and if, since day one people were like dude Street Fighter Duel is going to be dead in three months because it made X amount of money in, in the first month and then and then it made only X amount of money in, in month three and it dropped by half or whatever right so here's the thing you have to think about right the first the first and foremost thing is we as players don't know how much money is being spent on development costs and upkeep for these games. The only people who know that are the developers, probably not even the developers, they probably don't even know, right? Because a lot of times developers don't have that information privy to them. It's going to be pay people it's going to be people like publishers, it's going to be the investors, right? People who have actually put money or the in the company itself that's having to pay for this stuff. Right, a lot of people that are working there, just the people that develop the game, say like the animators or or the uh, you know the the the, uh, the programmers, things like that. They they probably don't know how much money certain things cost, right? That's not their, but that's not part of their job, right? So the thing you have to remember is think of it this way: if if a game, say let's just take Ever Crisis for example, right? Let, let's say let's say this game costs five hundred dollars a month or five hundred dollars. I'm sorry. Let's say let's say here to, to develop keep the game to be developed and and to keep it running every month it's five hundred thousand dollars, right? I'm just I don't I I have no idea what how much these things cost. I'm just throwing an arbitrary number out there. But let's just say it's five hundred thousand dollars. And in month one of Ever Crisis, it made twenty million dollars globally, right? So that's a kick-ass amount of money. But here's the thing: if you don't take into consideration how much that that the cost basis is and just even even if you don't know what it is if you don't take that into consideration you'd be like and then you see like two three months later oh ever crisis is only now only making five million it only made five million in x a month oh boy ever crisis is struggling it went from 20 million to, to five million well here's the thing right if if you if the cost of the game you have to cons this is what you have to consider if it only costs costs the developers and the whole cost of it per month is about five hundred thousand dollars and they made twenty million that first month that that's a huge profit margin right that's a that's a twenty that's a two thousand percent profit margin like that's big okay so then so then you see that it dropped down to five million. Well, that's that's still like a, a good profit margin, right? So you're only spending 500k to keep the game running, and you're making five million. So that means you're still profiting 900 or 9.5 million dollars, right? And again, I don't know how much these things cost to develop, but I'm just I'm just throwing out arbitrary numbers here. But I think it's important that people understand that just because a number of the cost of the 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 uh, the, um, the amount of money they made X month, and now it's not making that amount of money this month. 
doesn't mean anything. That literally means nothing without the most without the most important important piece of information, which is the cost. What's called the cost basis. If you don't know how much it's cost and how much the spending is going into the development then you have absolutely no idea if they're making money if they're losing money if they're just barely hanging on if they're just breaking even that is information that we don't have and so is speculating on that the game's doomed the game it, it's just the best way to put it is it's it's kind of silly right because it's like it, it it just doesn't it doesn't make any sense and this applies for all businesses this isn't just gotcha games right um and so, you know, and if you, you look at other gacha games too, and you see a lot of them, sometimes they can keep, they'll keep running and they're only making like $200,000. And, and personally to me, I'm thinking, boy, how does this game still run? Like I would imagine 200,000 barely even pays the devs, right? Cause uh, devs probably make pretty good money, but maybe it's different in Japan. I don't, I honestly don't know. Um, I'm not, I don't have that kind of information. I'm not going to claim to. Um, so yeah, I, I think that's a problem that a lot of people in the gacha community have. And I've seen it so much across so many games. I mean, there's what's, what's the sensor tower, right? That comes out every single month and, and it just floods. It's like the most, it's like the biggest post that happens every single month on like the gacha Reddit. And every single time I just see people looking, oh, this one didn't make this much at this month. It's the, the game's going to be dead next month or two months and blah, 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 blah. And then you'll still have these games going on, making and going on for another three, four, five years. And what that tells you is the, the game's going because they're still profitable, right? So without knowing if a game's actually profitable or not, you, you, there's, there's no reason to just come up and think, have these crazy ideas without having all the, the full scope of the picture. And, and so I would say, don't worry about how much a game is making. It doesn't, the, the amount of money that's coming in for a game, it doesn't mean anything without having the, all the other information right and so and so because of that this is what i want to share with you guys um and so today uh they square a square enix investor uh investor relations um uh earnings press release all that kind of stuff came out today and so i was i was able to acquire it and look at it uh so i just kind of want to show that off to you here here to you guys a little bit of what and this is what the ceo of the company is saying in regards to ever crisis um and so and so there's also a big announcement in this essentially which like I, I i don't think none of us expect it but this is actually like the first official announcement um but this and this also tells you how far ahead this game is actually in development so things that are happening now for instance I, i've seen people say oh man they finally did the bomb thing for the experience because um because you know people are having struggling leveling up i can promise most likely and because because of how long it does take to develop things i, under, I do understand this aspect that that thing was probably planned like around the time of the game's launch <laughs> most likely right that they probably a lot of this stuff was probably foreseen for quite some time um because events don't just happen I mean, granted, it does look like the bombs were probably quickly made. They just took a bomb skin, and it looks—it looks like they what are they? It looks like they took that gold foil that some people put on like at fancy like cheeseburgers, and it looks like they just threw that over it. So it's kind of funny. Um, so maybe they did do it pretty quick, but most of these things don't get designed that fast. Most of the time, they, they, there's a plan. They plan months ahead. They put them in the works, and, 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 and I'll show you here as far as an example. But but right here it says, and again, this is straight from Square Enix. Um, this is their Investor Reports financial earning briefing session. This actually was in November, but it was released, released today, so it's about two, two, uh, two months old. Um, but here we're going to just check out, we're going to skip some of it because there's a lot of stuff, stuff talking about Final Fantasy 16, uh, Rebirth and, and things like that. Um, but here it says, uh, the games for smart devices, PC browser sub-segment released, Dragon Quest Champions and Final Fantasy 7 Crisis, blah, blah, blah. Okay, it goes over that, and it says, We are meanwhile satisfied with how Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis performed in September and October immediately following its launch. We anticipate increased exposure for the title during the holiday season and with the launch of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth in February of 2024. In addition, we plan to boost activity by holding events celebrating its six months anniversary and expect Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis to make earning contributions as our core new title going forward. All right, so what this means is two things. If anybody knows anything about Square Enix, Square Enix is my all-time favorite game developer, so I, I follow them pretty intensely for a lot of, especially Final Fantasy stuff, it's my all-time favorite series. Um, it is, is Square Enix <laughs> is pretty well known for never being satisfied with, with their earnings reports, 
right? There has been a ton of games that they go, well, these just didn't make meet expectations. This didn't meet expectations. This didn't meet expectations. So the fact that they said that Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis, they are satisfied. I, I mean, it says right here, we are meanwhile satisfied with how Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis performed in September and October immediately following its launch. What that tells me is that Ever Crisis, day one, made a lot more money than they probably were even expecting it to. Which means the game is in a very healthy state right now, right? So even though, yes, you have to, again, you have to consider, if they made that much money, which I don't know what it was, supposedly it was around 20 million or something the first month, nobody realistically knows the actual numbers. I know sensor t people go, oh, look at Sensor Tower. That's not 100% accurate, right? The only people who actually know is Square, so we don't have that information, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna base things on pure conjecture. But what this does tell us based on, on Square Enix's history is that Square Enix, uh, it, it obviously, as they're since they're satisfied with Ever Crisis and the amount of money they've they've made made from it, the month, the first two months, that tells us that even though if that game gets even cut down to twenty five percent of what it did, um, they're they're probably still doing pretty pretty good with it, right? Um, which is which is a great thing, right? This is a great game. It's really free to play friendly. It's easily the most free to play friendly gotcha. Probably one of the most free to play I've ever seen. Um, possibly too much, and that's a whole that's a whole other topic because. And, and uh, unfortunately, gotcha games can kill themselves by being too free to play friendly. Um, but uh, but yeah, so so like and then as I said, uh, this is the kind of the big announcement essentially that that we we wouldn't even know because six months would be uh, would be what around February, February or March somewhere on there would be the six month thing. So that's gonna be gigantic because if if there's a six month anniversary and it's together with a rebirth thing, um, that's pretty big. So obviously this is telling us two things here. They're expecting it to make big earning contributions when during the launch of rebirth, which means that they're expecting rebirth to kind of also push Ever Crisis, but it likely means there's probably gonna be something to tie Ever Crisis into rebirth, which means there's gonna be some some really cool hopefully some really cool rebirth content or some kind of event to come out which would be badass um because i'm sure all of us are excited to play rebirth i know i am i have i ordered three copies of the damn game to make sure i got it on day one because I, i'm getting the physical version and nobody will let me pick it up um but then there's also a six month anniversary thing here uh going and then you know earnings to make more contribution going forward and then the biggest thing here we also expect our main existing titles to continue to make sustained earning contributions albeit with slight fluctuations um, uh, let's see here. Oh yeah, so I'm sorry, I I, I went a little too far. Uh, yeah, so he, and then they said and and ex, uh, let's see, we plan to boost activity by holding events, uh, celebrating its six month anniversary, and expect Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis to make earning contributions as our core new title going forward. And this is in regards to their their mobile and PC segment. Um, which is says up here, yeah, smart devices, PC browser is what they call it, right? So that tells you that right now, this is Square Enix's most important mobile game, period, right? With out of all the mobile games they have, you have War of the Visions, you got you got the Brave XVS, you got Nier, you got Dragon Quest. Like, and Dragon Quest is huge in Japan. So the fact that like Ever Crisis is their most important uh, mobile game to focus on, that tells you that there is going to be a lot of focus on customer satisfaction, quality, things like that and that's really important and that's also going to help drive the game to be really good and stay uh not only free to play friendly but have nice quality Hope hopefully this means more quality of life updates in the future obviously these things take time and i think there's a lot of quality of life updates i think many of us can agree upon <clears throat> aka sliders um that uh that i think a lot of us would like to see and i'll actually be making another video about that as well um but yeah so so i just kind of just kind of backtrack and just touch base on everything a little bit again guys um don't don't worry how much a game is making um you know whatever you're seeing at sensor tower doesn't mean anything right you can see that disregard it disregard the comments they don't mean anything the num numbers don't mean anything because you don't have all the numbers right um, and like I said, it's part of my job. Like part of my job is I look at how, because I work in sales, I have to look at how much something costs and I have to go, okay, how much can I sell this for to make a profit? Like I have to do these things as part of my, my regular job. Um, and if I don't have that, the, if I don't know how much something costs, 
I, I can't even begin to do the rest of my job because that's the most important piece of information that I have to do in order to say, hey, okay, here's how much I need to know. Here's how much I can price it at because if I price it too low, great. Now I got my, my boss knocking on my door or my phone or whatever being like, hey, why did you, we lost money on this. Why are we pricing it at this, you know? And so, um, with you, you need all that information, and so don't just just don't worry about it. You know the game is in a healthy state. Square Enix himself, right here in their report, is saying, "Hey, it's in a healthy state," um, which again, coming from them, that's 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 a pretty big deal, considering how how picky they are with this kind of stuff. So yeah, yeah, whatever. The game it, uh, and every single gotcha game in a pre in, every single gotcha game since day one almost every single one will not make the amount of money it makes in the first month or two for the rest of its life. It's extremely rare. You might have like one or two, like, like in Genshin and Honkai are like their own monster in that sense, right? They are something, they are some other beast, but, but like 99% of gacha games, if you, if you just look at any report realistically, cause like you can look at, like I said, looking at the money's fine and you can make this, you can make this basis. Almost every game you can see it from, from month one and two or whatever, as the game goes on, it'll eventually get, it'll eventually find a point and it plateaus. It's very hard for a gacha game to get out of a plateau because that's, unfortunately that's just the nature of these games, right? They get, they have a lot of hype and build up at the beginning. People get into them and and unfortunately, a lot of people that spend money on gacha games, uh, they're very, they're very quick to move on to new things. They don't like, they're not, they, they want more and more and more. And so, so they, they max out or especially the whales, the majority of, of the, of the, the money is being made by whales. And again, thank you whales. I can't thank you guys enough for keeping games like this alive. It's, it's because of you, these games exist. Let's be honest. Let's not bad at being around the bush here. Um, but, but but a lot of those people they will get bored of it and they just go move on to another game and they start spending on that game you know oh a new game comes out that's that's the new hype so they go move on to that right and that, that's just par for the course that's how gotcha games work and you have to remember no gotcha game is ever going to live forever or even online service game will be around forever right I mean like right right now probably the longest one is like EverQuest or something right now like that's an online game but like at some point whether it's whether it's this year whether it's in 15 years all online games for the most part will come to an end at some point and that's just the nature of them right they're a service and 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 it can't last forever um it, it's no different than a tv show right it's a tv show you have some that last 30 40 years and they eventually come to an end it, it'll happen it's just we don't know how long so just enjoy it while it's here don't worry how much money's you know it's making enjoy the game play it spend if you want to spend don't spend if you want to spend but the most important thing have fun um, and then, and then, uh, yeah, so, so hopefully uh, you guys learn a little bit from this, um, and it helps ease your mind uh, and, you know, just, just to not, not dive in too much of thinking into, into that kind of stuff and the, all the numbers and stuff that you see. But, uh, but yeah, uh, that's, that's pretty much it for this one. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Appreciate it. Uh, keep rocking and I'll catch you next time. Peace. Thank you for watching the video. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure to hit like and subscribe. You can catch me live every single day on Twitch and YouTube. So be sure to check the links down below in the description for my channels. And I will see you guys on the next video.